Will Thomas is an award-winning investigative reporter with more than four, uh, 35 years experience. He was named by Time Magazine as Art Bell's most popular talk show guest. Tom Thomas offers cogent, documented facts and insights into some of the biggest underreported stories of our times. William Thomas speaks with a depth of authority that challenges conventional beliefs while inspiring trust and respect. Thomas's writing and photography have appeared in more than 50 publications in eight countries. He's also the winner of four Canadian Feature Writing Awards, as well as Best Documentary Short at the 1991 U.S. Environmental Film Festival for his Eco War documentary. He is the author of numerous books. These are a few of them. All Fall Down, The Politics of Terror and Mass Persuasion, Scorched Earth, Bringing the War Home, Alt Health, The ABCs of Cell Phones, and others. Without further ado, William Thomas. Thank you. Thank you. I like to speak without notes, but unfortunately it's impossible today because I've got all these numbers, I've got so many numbers, and if I get one number wrong, someone from the industry will come up and say, look at I got numbers, look at my numbers. We got microvolts and microwatts and milliwatts and what, what. And my attitude is, as long as we're comparing the same things, the same measurements, let's just call them chocolate chip cookies. Because folks, it's not about numbers. It's about common sense. Look around you, we have thousands of years of human experience and expertise in this room right now. I think together we can figure this thing out. The subject is also about remembering who we are. Human, spirit, people. We are electrochemical beings of light. I mean that literally. Just a few months ago, scientists in Japan using a cryogenically supercooled CCD chip managed to photograph little photons of light between human cells during the process of metabolism. And they said, hey, guess what? The human body really does directly and rhythmically emit light. Very weak light, very subtle light. And our cells are very subtly whispering right now as I speak. You know, we say we're interested in electromagnetics, it's like a fish saying I'm interested in water. <laughs> electromagnetics is one of the four strong forces of the universe. We have gravity, the weak and strong force, and we have electromagnetics. Right now, when we're listening and hearing about electromagnetism, we are using electromagnetic processes in our brain to take in and understand that information, and that information is stored in electromagnetic fields in our brains. So it all makes a circle. But these subtle whisperings between our many cells are very quiet, perhaps one one hundredth of a volt. And when we're chattering our cell phones, our cells are trying to chatter at the same time. And they're saying, hey, want some more calcium? No, no, hold the calcium. If I get much more calcium, then I can't inhibit cell division and things might get a little out of control. So hold the calcium. How about some sodium? Okay, a little sodium's good. How about some serotonin? Yeah, that's really good. Makes me feel calm, focused, relaxed. Yeah, that's good. And of course, the serotonin makes melatonin in the pineal gland. And that not only helps us sleep when it's time to sleep, but melatonin inhibits breast cancer. Melatonin inhibits Alzheimer's disease. So, yeah, carry on with the melatonin. Oh, there's a knock on the cell wall. What? Oh, that's a protein. They're good in the bloodstream, but they're bad in the, in the cells and really bad in the brain, so keep that door closed to those proteins. And, oh, by the way, somebody take out the trash. So that's what our cells are saying or trying to say until we turn on a cell phone, plug in a portable phone cradle, drive under or hopefully not live near or sit under a microwave tower and then we get 
and no offense to heavy metal rock, but we get heavy metal music at full blast and our cells are going, I can't think. I can't work. I can't communicate. I cannot function. So this really is the level of concern that we are addressing today, our fundamental nature as electrochemical beings and the impact of much stronger electromagnetic radiation jackhammering in our cells almost 24-7 in many cities. So let's take a step back, back to that common sense comment and imagine for a moment that you happen to live in a society whose technological advances are the wonder of the world. Bold new realistic art adorns private and public buildings. Architecture is, a, is the envy of other nations. Even the sculptures are, are smiling. Theater presentations are free. Music is flourishing at religious events and orgies. You happen to be a member of an advanced market economy with all of its benefits. If someone wants to govern the people, they have to be elected. Laws are decided in the Senate and judges enact those laws and interpret them in courts. So this is pretty far out. You've got technological superiority, concrete, durable buildings, road network, just about everywhere. And the most mind-blowing innovation of all, running water. In the 900 public baths in this city and in almost every home, flush toilets and running water. It's absolutely incredible. It's revolutionary. And it's all because of that miracle metal that enabled the lead pipes to plumb the city-state called Rome 2,000 years ago. Well, unfortunately, health-wise, it turned out not to be such a good thing. In fact, it turned out to be the worst things the Romans could have done because, of course, it caused widespread lead poisoning. The consequences were not immediately apparent, so people carried on, but birth deformities increased, birth rates plummeted, and eventually a sickened and brain damaged society degenerated. And Rome fell. There were other reasons, of course, but the pollution from uh, all this lead plumbing was key in the fall of Rome. Does this sound familiar? Cell phones and wireless networks are our lead pipes. I'll quickly get my own bias out of the way. A decade ago, I owned a cell phone. I thought it was cool to have a Star Trek communicator in my hand. I thought it was a miraculous. I could call virtually anyone, anywhere, anytime. And it was way cool until I started doing research and I wrote my first cell phone paper on cell phone health hazards. I got rid of that phone very quickly, I can tell you, 10 years ago, and I haven't had one since. I do admit that when there is no other alternative, I will make a very brief conversation on a cell phone or a portable phone maybe twice a year. Now, I'll be the first to agree that microwave and RF radio frequency radiation from cell phones, portable phones, Wireless routers, laptop computers, notebook computers, security scanners, RIFID readers, radar guns, radars on the BC ferry today, cell phone relay towers on top of this building, they pose zero danger, absolutely no danger at all to rocks. At least I think that statement's accurate. But if you happen to be a sperm cell, a fertilized ovum, pregnant woman, newly born infant, toddler, adolescent, teenager, or adult, regularly exposed to the invisible smog of the runaway wireless age, more than 1,500 published medical studies show that your mental, emotional, and physical health, not to mention your subtle energy body, are being permanently impaired by these invisible rays not will be compromised at some hazy future date, are being degraded by this nearly ubiquitous cellular bombardment. The damage begins immediately, it is cumulative, and most often it cannot be reversed. Children are especially at risk, so are our furred, feathered, amphibious, buzzing, and four-legged friends, also highly susceptible to wireless pollution. 
if anyone in this room is concerned about 2012 and this supposed cosmic burst striking the earth at that time, you can relax. The electromagnetic storm is already here and we're doing it to ourselves. So let's get radical. Let's go to the roots of this whole thing. Everything, we can agree, everything is vibration. <coughs> the only reason you can sit on that chair without falling onto the ground is that it's vibrating slowly enough, so is your body, that you can sit in that chair. Everything is vibration. Everything is frequency. And like waves at sea, and I've seen a few myself, each frequency is characterized by its own up and down amplitude and its short or long wavelength. And like storms at sea, short, choppy wavelengths can piggyback on each other. It's called superheterodyning. Piggyback and form rogue waves or rogue frequencies that are even more disruptive. And this is the soup that we swim through. So if everything is a vibration and everything is in, either, is in either resonance or discord with every other vibration instantaneously across space, then we want to pay attention to the vibrations we interact with, especially those in the electromagnetic spectrum produced artificially to pulse at frequencies never before encountered by life on this planet. Never before encountered. Remember that your body is an antenna filled with electrically conductive fluid. It becomes more transparent to radio frequency radiation as frequency increases. The higher up the electromagnetic spectrum we go, the more risk there is because each photon carries more energy. As hertz or cycles per second increase, biological stress on the human body increases too. It's not the power level, folks. Cell phones are operated at very low power levels. Wireless operates at very low power levels. The, those power levels are even more dangerous than higher power levels. But it's all this pulsing that's the problem. And cell phones in particular are dangerous because they also operate in microwave frequencies, very high microwave frequencies. And just like the, the food in your microwave oven, and please unplug that thing immediately and put that away when you get home. The food vibrates so fast in a microwave oven, the molecular structure of that food changes and your body accepts that food and regards it as a foreign invader. So that if you put your nice expensive organic veggies in your microwave, your cholesterol uh, reading will go up off the chart as if you're eating junk food because the body's trying to protect itself against a mole molecules it can't recognize. So too, cell phones vibrate human cells heat them up and cause all kinds of disruptions. Dr. George Carlo was a person who found this out. He's working for a research group funded by Motorola some years ago to come up with a study showing that these things are safe. Unfortunately, he came up with a study that said cell phone radiation can triple the number of chromosome abnormalities in human blood cells. He was fired. All of these researchers that told the truth and found out disturbing information that I'm talking about today and I have in my book outside, they were all fired, their labs shut down. And finally, while we're on this subject, I invite you to check out Dr. Matsuo Emoto's book, Hidden Messages in Water. Probably you've seen it. I've got some photographs up on the table there. Amazing photographs. He takes water and subjects it to the vibrations that we call words, negative vibrations loving vibrations, and then photographs, freezes them and photographs these snowflake-like crystalline structures. Go have a look at the photographs of water subjected to loving vibration, loving words, and the one next to it subjected to cell phone vibration. Drastic, drastic different. Well, what do you think is happening to the water in our own bodies? We're mostly water by weight. What do you think is happening to the city reservoir right out there? subjected to all these RF and microwave frequencies. I wonder. I wonder. Of course, everybody insists they feel fine until they don't. Now, the Chinese call our subtle energy qi. They know and they say and we believe that when it's blocked, disease results. I quote a woman, she's wonderfully named, her name is Phyllis Light, and she said, how is Wi-Fi affecting us energetically. 
What happens when our electromagnetic blueprint, our electromagnetic field is repeatedly jackhammered by artificial electromagnetics? Well, things come apart. Remember I was mentioning the cells and how chemistry is the medium of exchange in our cells. Well, cellular phones, it turns out, are very aptly named. When you chat on a cell phone, your own cells are chattering away, as we mentioned, in chemical codes. These living cells recognize specific frequencies, and they react to these frequencies. For example, a certain frequency can open up your cell wall and let in these proteins and other bad things. Normally, of course, this would never happen. But electromagnetic radiation, microwaves, and RF in particular can open the cell walls in our bodies and in our brains. So when we use a cell phone, we are truly dialing ourselves. And each conversation dials ourselves directly, and the message is, hang up. Most cells exposed to mobile phone radiation are disrupted and unable to function for up to an hour after the call, or longer. Again, the damage is cumulative. We mentioned those calcium levels. Turns out that wireless radiation causes a spike in calcium at one-tenth the British safety guidelines at frequencies that cause the biggest changes in calcium that invite rapid and uncontrolled cell division. The cells of our heart muscles are also affected. Heart attacks can result. We're talking a truly astronomical event here. An astronomer said that if Neil Armstrong had taken a cell phone to the moon in 1969, presumably he went to the moon, the, th <laughs> the third most powerful source of microwave radiation in the universe, next only to the sun and the Milky Way, would have been on the moon. The third most powerful source of microwave energy in one little cell phone. Now, are we willing to allow that to permeate our children's and our own energy fields in our lives over a lifetime of constant exposure? I hope not. I know we're all getting thirsty, so if, later on, if you want to win a bar bet, ask the person next to you, hey, what's the biggest source of pollution on Earth? The answer, of course, human-made electromagnetic fields. That's how I got interested in the subject. I was writing about uh, the effects of military uh, on the environment in war and peacetime for a new society over in Gabriola, a book called Scorched Earth, and I read this is the biggest pollution of all. <coughs> Dr. George Carlo, we mentioned him. He says, because of wireless technology, our global equivalent of Rome's lead pipes, Electromagnetic radiation has increased 500,000 times over normal background levels in the last five years. Whoa. More than one trillion times in the last few decades. And we're subtle electrochemical beings. We are exquisitely sensitive to electromagnetic stimuli. On this planet, the normal background level of electromagnetic radiation is between 0 0.01 and 0 0.00001 microwatts per square meter. Cell phones radiate between 2 and 50 million microwatts per square meter. Are we done yet? Oh no, it's safe, it's cool. We have safety standards. We have the SAR. Oh, that's good. Standard absorption rate. What's that? Well, we measure a cell phone uh, radiation, and if it burns your skin, uh, we won't permit that cell on the market. That's like saying, if you don't burn yourself smoking, it won't harm your health. In fact, the SAR totally avoids measuring the spikes in electromagnetic microwave radiation, so your brain can be hit with seven times more power than is actually measured. Not regulated, just measured. Swedish studies show rat brain damage. Remember, rats are us in terms of DNA and brain rats are us. Brain damage at SAR levels 800 times lower than government guidelines. 800 times lower. That means that secondhand radiation from someone else's cell phone from that tower on the building is significant, a significant factor. Here in Canada, back in 1991, that's a ways back in terms of this subject and the information we have. Canadian Safety Code 6 
allows much higher pulse level, remember it's the pulsing that's the problem here, than even Sweden, that's where cell phones were invented and now represent a national health emergency. Of course, cumulative exposure is not addressed in Canada. But don't worry, the cell phone tower emissions up there are based on computer simulations done by the industry at the time of application. They're not measured. Human cells exposed to common cell phone frequencies at one-tenth the power levels of most cell phones activate a chemical switch linked to many cancers within 10 minutes. University of Washington researchers were hired by the US military to see how safe this was and they found out that a 2.4 gigahertz portable phone or cell phone increases the DNA breaks in our brain cells after two hours of exposure at one-fifth of the FCC's safety limits. So two minutes of cell phone exposure, you're on the phone for two minutes and your blood brain barrier opens. And these proteins come in, the albumin comes in, pharmaceuticals come in, things that that barrier was supposed to keep out. Two minutes on a cell phone. What happens? Nerve damage happens, neurons are destroyed. Diseases like multiple sclerosis and Alzheimer's happen because of these proteins allowed into the brain. Parkinson's disease happens. But blood-brain barrier leakage and potassium and calcium ion flux in human cells are ignored by the SAR. They are ignored by Health Canada. So are modulated signals. And this is the crux of it here, folks. Modulation is what allows information to piggyback on different carrier frequencies. All wireless signals are modulated to carry speech, video, and the control signals to make this thing work. Most of these digital modulation systems involve very sharp changes and rapid changes in signal strength over a wide range of frequencies that are biologically active at radiation levels many orders of magnitude lower than government guidelines. And our bodies take in not only the energy but the information. This jagged spikes of information. Our bodies turn these signals into electric currents, just like the antenna on our cell phone, except this is a five foot, five inch antenna, six foot antenna. We're huge antennas, again, filled with conductive fluid. And we send these currents flowing through our tissues and our veins to every part of the human body. And I can tell you, looking around at a lot of fatigued people, we are burning out a lot of radio antennas, a lot of human radio antennas. Over time, this radiation damage gathers momentum like a runaway train. Call after call after call, living near that cell phone tower day and night. Depending on which cells are affected, we're looking at brain damage, infertility, hearing loss, cataracts, general malaise, ADD, autism, miscarriages, birth defects, leukemia autoimmune illnesses, cancer, sudden aggression, depression, or early Alzheimer's. I'm not saying these are caused solely by microwave and RF radiation. Of course there are other factors, chemical factors, pollution factors, stress is a major factor. But cell phone and portable phone and wireless, other wireless radiation are directly linked in clinical test after clinical test to these diseases. So we're cruising along, resonating with Mother Earth at 10 hertz or 10 cycles per second. Our heart's going kathump kathump at two cycles per second. So that's cool, except microwave radiation sends out electromagnetic waves from 300 million to 300 billion cycles per second. It's shaken cell syndrome. Because every cell in our body is whipped back and forth millions or billions of times per second. Guess what happens? Within minutes, one or both strands of that double helix, you've seen Crick's double helix picture of DNA, one or both strands in that ladder is broken. Within minutes. The body can repair most single strand breaks but the body cannot repair double strand breaks and that's what got Dr. Carlo and others fired. 
The Indian Journal of Human Genetics just came out and said, hey, 40% of human cells taken from cell phone users show DNA damage. 40%. So it's no wonder last year microwaves were, were classified as a chronic poison by the National Institute of Health. Funny thing, though, they continue to proliferate. One of my biggest motivations of coming down here today and speaking with you folks is I particularly wanted to address the women. I wanted to say very loudly and very clearly that no human tissue is more sensitive to radiation, any kind of radiation, than female ovaries. So now pregnant women must not only refrain from drinking and smoking, they must also avoid portable phones, cell phones, wireless routers at home in the office, cell phone towers, and ultrasound scans except in the most compelling emergencies. Assuming, of course, that you know you're pregnant. Dr. Barnett warns that the womb saline fluid is highly conductive to radio frequencies and microwaves. Pelvic structure and amniotic fluids promote deep penetration of microwaves that are easily absorbed by the fetus. That was the big Cicero study in Australia in 1994. In 1994, he and others were finding that all, all, all fetuses show growth retardation from cell phone exposure. And the pictures in my book of the woman with the laptop on her belly. Female offspring exhibit impaired learning ability. Males showed hyperactivity. We've known this since 1994. Another giant study, 13,000 kids, found that pregnant women who talk on a cell phone just twice a day profoundly impact their child's behavior and ability to form social relationships. So after all of this insult, the kid comes into the world and instantly gets a rifid tag strapped onto her ankle, and mom gets a matching wristband, and now they get to have this continuously vibrating 134,000 cycles per second. Then we take the child home and we broil that child alive, literally, in an electromagnetic soup found in most homes. Not just the routers, gigahertz baby monitors, so we can tell when the kid finally dies from all this exposure. Home security systems. I'm serious, cordless phones, clock radios, clock radios next to your bed. Get rid of it, extremely dangerous. Funny though, doctors still can't explain this huge epidemic and growing epidemic of sudden infant death syndrome. Maybe they're not looking in the right place. Maybe this thickening electrosmog is interfering, maybe, with the weak currents that drive tiny cells, rapidly dividing tiny cells, and govern heart rates. Autopsy brain tissue from SIDS baby shows that a loss of serotonin might be behind crib death. Guess what? Electromagnetic fields inhibit serotonin. And as soon as the cordless phone is removed from the bedroom and from the neighboring houses and apartments, infants' heartbeats return to normal. Of course, many women today go in, and pregnant women go in and get ultrasound photographs of their fetus. Just when their cells are most vulnerable, rapidly dividing, and you've seen the pictures. And the reason why the kid's grimacing and shaking his fist <laughs> is because he's got a 747 going through the womb. Don't do this. Please don't do this. Studies show a possible correlation between prenatal ultrasound exposure and dyslexia, delayed speech development, and reduced birth weight, as well as many cognitive and de developmental problems. Oh dear, ranging from learning Difficulties to autism and epilepsy. Same with cell phones, same with portable phones. This isn't just theory, folks. In 1970, before cell phones and wireless really took off, one out of 10,000 children in North America were diagnosed with autism. That's a lot, one in 10,000. By 2007, with wireless really gaining speed here, it was one out of every 166 children. That's a 6,000% increase. One in every six children is now diagnosed with a neurological disorder. Like, what's going on? European physicians are loudly and persistently asking, what has changed the most 
in this children's environment during those intervening years? And there is only one answer. So we're talking about cell phone altered brains. Toddlers, teens, tweens, adults, doesn't matter. But kids are most susceptible because they have thinner skulls and the radiation penetrates deeper and their cells, as we mentioned, are dividing quicker. But the results across the population are lack of concentration, memory loss, inability to learn, and aggressive behavior. Geez, if you're a controlling elite, how great is that? Perfect. No one can make a sense out of anything. No one's got an attention span anymore. No one can remember a baseline where things were better. Dr. Gerald Hyland is not the only doctor. He's one of the first to say my advice, advice would be not cut back. My advice is avoid cell phones. And then another obscenity, so many children with asthma. Drives me nuts. Sydney, Australia, first city to go wireless. Wow, we got wireless. Oops, 25% spike in asthma cases. 5% spike in death rates after they went wireless. Ola Johansson, I quote him a lot. He's in Sweden, associate professor of neuroscience at Karolinska Institute in Stockholm. He says, point blank, parents should take their children away from that technology, period. And do yourself a favor and take yourself away from it at the same time. I mentioned chronic fatigue. It's huge in Japan. I live there. Very hyper society. Go, go, go. Well, a doctor did an experiment and he had some people, would you hold that cell phone up to your head? Sure. 30 seconds, blood flow to the brain drops by half. And you wonder why you're fuzzy. What about the eyes? A 10-year-old child absorbs five times more cell phone radiation in their eyes than an adult. Whether you're a child or an adult, tiny bubbles, bubbles, ugh, are created on the lens of the eye. Amy Worthington, I love her, she does excellent work. She says, what is safe about micro-cooking a child's eyes? I don't know, Amy, but I do know that people that wear wireframe glasses are even more susceptible to cell phone radiation. Oh, you're having trouble hearing me? Oh, do you have to ask people to keep repeating themselves? Do people complain when you turn up the volume on the television or the stereo too loud? Do you have difficulty following conversations in a noisy environment? Difficulty hearing when someone speaks in a whisper? Guess what? Your cell phone should come with this guarantee. Absolute guarantee. Using this device more than 60 minutes a day for just one year will result in high frequency hearing loss. You will no longer be able to hear consonants like S, F, T, Z. Conversations will start sounding like a Martian dialect. Warmth and ringing in the ears is a warning sign. Well, these things maybe not, might not be so convenient after all. But that's okay, let's put them in our classrooms because our kids have got to be with the wireless age. So go ahead, put your wireless laptops in the classroom and now you've got radiation levels three times higher in the classroom than in that mobile phone transmitter in the schoolyard outside. Those kids aren't going to learn anything, but they will be impaired for life. I'm not saying that, Spanish doctors are saying that. They fear that disturbed brain activity in children will lead to impaired learning ability as well as psychiatric and behavior problems. That sounds pretty bad. Dr. David Carpenter, he's the dean of the School of Public Health uh, at State University of New York. He says, I believe that 30% of all childhood cancers are associated with EMF exposure. What in the world are children doing getting cancer? Brain tumors are now the number one cause of death in children. That is obscene. Oh yeah, here's the slogan. Wherever, wherever you go, there we are. No member in the family should be without one. That's criminal. Or as Dr. Carlos said on New Zealand television, that's grotesque. With 50,000 new diagnosed cases of brain and eye cancer, every year. We're heading rapidly, the experts tell us, to 500,000 cases over the next few years worldwide and we'll pick a number. And we're having some problems with the bees. Remember the bees, how their populations have plummeted around the world. Well in India, 
They found that after the towers were installed by cell phone companies, and beekeeping is a very big industry uh, in southern uh, India, their bee populations collapsed. It turns out that honeybees have millions of magnetic crystals in their abdomens, so they're the most sensitive navigators along Earth's magnetic field lines. They're the most susceptible to cell phone and other wireless radiation. And they fly out and find food and come back and they do a dance. And their wing beats gives the direction and distance to the food, frequency again. If that's messed up with microwave radiation, well, there are going to be some very hungry bees. When a cell phone, not a tower, when a cell phone was put near a beehive, the worker bees weren't unable to return, resulting in the collapse of that colony within 10 days. Bees pollinate almost half the crops on this earth. And now we fear that honeybees could be wiped out in 10 years. But at least, you know, don't worry so much about the children because we're not having many more children. <laughs> Infertility is a spreading epidemic directly associated with countries married to their cell phones. In India, 2008-2009 study, whoa, big freak out. One in four married couples in Delhi are infertile. What does that mean? It means they could not conceive even after trying for two years or more. One in four. And we see this around the world. Male infertility especially increasing very fast in at least four out of ten cases. The result of poor sperm quality and low sperm count. Universal now and coinciding, coinciding with the rapid spread of wireless technologies and radiation. The press in India also reports, quote, mushrooming cell phone towers on the rooftops across the nation. Uh, they don't put it together. Well, I suggest that these are towers of lethal babble. We know that ir irreversible, that irreversible sterility occurs in mice after five generations of exposure to a fraction of a microwatt of this radiation. If you're living near a cell phone tower, you are receiving up to 70 microwatts per square centimeter. We've got more than two million of these damn towers, sorry, cell phone towers, no, damn towers, <coughs> and antennas in the United States. Many are now being disguised as trees, plastic trees, <laughs> great disguise, flagpoles, water towers, chimneys, gas stations, and church steeples. Why disguise cell phone towers unless there's something to hide? Oh, and one other thing, cell phone towers must boost their power radically to penetrate rain. Scientists in Israel are now using this to measure rainfall accurately. They don't need rain gauges everywhere. They said, this is great. We've got a network of these towers that spans almost the entire globe, and we can get accurate rainfall measurements by measuring their power output. Here in Canada, Canadian activists are seeking at least a 500 meter buffer. It's a quarter mile in Russia, but 500 meter buffer uh, from each of the 10,000 or more cell phone towers in this country. I'm also very concerned, very concerned about this Alzheimer's epidemic and its direct link, repeat direct link, to cell phone and wireless, other wireless radiation. What happens is these brain proteins uh, change shape and clump together and form pathological or sickening protein fibrils like those found in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's patients. People are finding this in France, they're finding this in China. The Lancet, you've heard the Lancet Medical Journal says Alzheimer's rates are exploding, their words. More than 26 million people are diagnosed with this disease, probably much higher. The latest forecast sees this number quadrupling, quadrupling by 2050, just when we're really going to need our wits about us. At this rate, at least one in 85 people on board planet Earth will be brain wiped within 40 years. This makes me really nervous. One of the first indications of dementia and a common side effect of frequent cordless portable phone and cell phone use is memory loss. How many people do you know? who use their cell phones a lot or are on a portable a lot, often forget important appointments, phone numbers, errands, and directions. I know lots of people like that, but now that's becoming normal. 
A whole generation of teenagers, teenagers faces premature senility in the prime of their lives due to the use of mobile phones and the newer wireless technology. The Daily Express reported in Britain nine years ago. Now doctors are saying any child, any teenager brought up with cell phones and portable phones will be functionally senile by the age of 30 and no longer able to contribute to society. By the age of 30, yes, I am alarmed. We keep talking about portable phones, and that's a very strong part of my message today. And if you want to win another bet, ask someone if cordless phones are safer than cell phones. No. We mentioned that we resonate at 10 cycles a second. Our hearts beat at 2 cycles a second. And these portable phone cradles that are on 24-7 in most homes now in North America put out 1,900 or more million cycles per second over a range greater than 200 feet right through the walls, right into your neighbor's house, or from their house, right into your house. In a bedroom above a room with a cordless phone, the UK watchdog group Power Watch, check them out on the web, they found microwave radiation as strong as three volts per meter. Doesn't sound like much, whatever that means, three volts per meter. Ill health effects have been found at levels of 0 0.06 volts per meter. Uh-oh. In fact, a cordless phone cradle in your home will emit more radiation in that room than a cell phone tower 50 to 100 feet away outside. And it will do it continuously. And if you have more than one and you've got wireless computer routers, you are cooking everybody in that house and in the houses and apartments around you. Please, please, please turn them off. Unplug them. Blood samples taken from children in range of portable, portable phones show stunted red blood cell corpuscles. Their listlessness, aggression, pallor, and sleeplessness were reversed. Here's the good news. Reversed immediately by removing the cordless phone. Not just the phone, of course, the cradle. And how many elderly and infirm people have portable phones next to their bed? How many cancer patients? Get those out of there, please, along with the clock radio. Bluetooth. What about Bluetooth? Surely that's good. That's super low power. Very short range. Well, unfortunately, Bluetooth, or maybe it's blue teeth, they're succumbing to this more horsepower craze that's part of this whole wireless madness. And now they too, you can flip a switch on your Bluetooth and it'll send out 2.4 gigahertz, billion times per second, at 100 microwatts. That's roughly the same level as a cell phone. So the difference, of course, is you've got the earpiece. I hope you don't, but people do. I see them on these movies as some kind of role models. They think in the ear all day long, even at the dinner table, like, hello? Right into the brain, right into the soft tissue of the ear, right into the eye, almost all day long. Bad idea, um, but if you really want to go for it, get yourself a Blackberry Bold. It's truly bold. Blasts out 3.5 billion cycles a second. Put that in your ear and smoke that. See what happens. <laughs> so it's just about time to use the F word. I have to warn you, we're going to use the F word. There's no getting around the F word. States in service to corporate interests is fascism. That's how Mussolini defined it, and he should know. Governments in service to corporations selling these devices putting cell phone towers in our yards and neighborhoods against our will. That is fascism in action. Absolutely. The good news is fascism can be cured if we refuse to cooperate with it. If governments opt out of the corporate agenda, and I'm here today to say that governments in countries like France, Germany, Israel, Bangladesh are opting out of the wireless cell phone agenda. Of course, what makes this so difficult to defeat or transform is to convince a brain-damaged addict that she or he is harming their health and the health of everyone around, around them. These, these things are truly physically addictive. They release uh, endorphins, dopamine in the brain. That, that feels good. The headache doesn't feel so good, but hey, it feels good. And so now we have something called cell phone dependency. It's also called compulsive communicating. You've seen that, especially among kids. The texting thing is nuts.
Teenagers in a codependent relationship with their cell phones commonly communicate with their human boyfriends or girlfriends by talking on their phones or text messaging at least once every hour between midnight and 5 a.m. Many communicate 10 or more times every hour through the night. You still love me? Yes, I still love you. Good. You still love me? Yes, I still love you. You still love me? Yes. I mean, we laugh, but by God, this, the, what happened to the self-esteem? Well, remember, this, these microwaves also uh, interrupt serotonin and destroy self-esteem. So we got to keep checking in, checking in. My cell phone rang. I'm important. See, I got a call. In fact, I'll pay a company to just send me ringtones so I can take the message and, true, and impress my friends. Kids are not only on their phone all day, they sleep with it at night right next to them and the vibration wakes them up. Man, oh man. You know, the switch on a cell phone or a portable phone really ought to be labeled delete. Put it next to your skull and hit delete. Now we have truth in advertising. But maybe you still want to bet, play, I'm sorry, you still want to play, you bet the rest of your life. So here are the odds, folks. Here are the latest odds given by the top cell phone researchers. Anyone who uses a cell phone next to your head or hands-free, they're much worse, by the way, the hands-free, because they admit... Uh, ten times more power to become hands-free and they triple the radiation to your head, but use either one for 64 hours, that's all. Don't care. Do it all at once. Do it over time. 64 hours, you've doubled your cancer risk. Use it for five years or live in proximity to a wireless antenna and of course that circle of dysfunction broadens considerably Last year, Dr. Keith Black, he's a famous neurosurgeon, he told Larry King Anyone exposed to over 2,000 hours of cell phone use, that's an hour a day for 10 years, can expect a 370% increase in the risk of developing brain cancer. He does a lot of brain cancer surgery. It virtually guarantees, absolutely guarantees permanent brain impairment along with your double or tripled cancer risk. And yet, one in every two persons on this planet counts their cell phone among their three most indispensable possessions, along with cash and keys. Don't leave home without it. In most developing countries, nearly everyone past the age of nine, nine, has a cell phone. And the age of regular cell phone users and their life expectancy is dropping fast. So when addressing these infernal devices, the solution is simple. Turn them off before they turn our children off, before they turn the bees off, before they turn us off. You can link to citizen action groups on the internet, Rally your neighborhood to block or remove cell phone towers, including the one on this building. Please watch out for the stealth towers and something brand new called co-positioning. This is very clever. The cell phone companies uh, are going out and putting their little transmitters on AM radio antennas. Because the AM radio antenna, people say you can do this. The antenna's already up. No one will notice. And uh, this is their new stealth technology. So you've got to watch out for the AM. Those AM, FM, and TV antennas are also harmful. So where are we at? Six in ten people on planet Earth. I assume that's infants. Six in ten people has a cell phone subscription. Holy smokes. Cell phone subscriptions outnumber wired phone subscriptions three to one. Boy, it's really, <laughs> it's going to be tough turning back this tide. And it's open season on kids. This really gets me steamed. You know, I'm not very passionate, but this gets me going. Cell phone makers are using the same PR firms and their proven techniques that marketed tobacco to target teens with yet another life-threatening addiction. But cell phone cigarette pushers never went after toddlers. Children as young as four years old are being targeted with these kitty phones. Almost every child in the UK old enough to spell sends and receives text messages and that phone is on transmitting while she or he does that. Most children in Europe have their own cell phone after age nine. You know, what is this, a population control experiment? I mean, we're talking omnicide of the planet here. We're talking destruction of DNA across the global population. You know, I know greed is blind, but this is ridiculous. Of course, British doctors remain muzzled, just like their American Medical Associated <coughs> American counterparts. They can't talk about this stuff. But German doctors are paid by insurance companies and paid by their patients. So they can talk about it, and they are speaking out. In October 99, 
10 years ago, they launched the Freeburger Appeal, signed now by more than 3,000 doctors and health professionals. And they asked the German government back then to revise cell phone and other wireless safety standards, restrict cell phone use, and prohibit portable phones. They observed a rapid rise in the severe and chronic diseases I've already mentioned. They said it's not coincidence that after a careful inquiry, a clear correlation in time and space was found between the sudden onset of these illnesses and exposure to pulsed high frequency microwave radiation from cell phone towers installed nearby, from intensive cell phone use, and from installation of portable phones at home or in the neighborhood. Today, more than one in every five American homes has only wireless phones. Cell phone texting is a $100 billion a year business. That's 8 billion texts sent every day, 2.8 trillion texts sent every year. Uh, that's 92,000 text messages being sent every second as I'm speaking. Ah, do you really think that most of these messages are vital? <laughs> do you think they're worth the risk? How did we ever live without texting? How are we ever going to live with it? But we have innovation after innovation because the cell phone market is becoming saturated. Okay, I got five of these phones. I don't need any more phones. No, no, look, I got games. Oh, that's good. I got these new ringtones. I got streaming video. We can send pictures. And the cell phone makers are panicked and they keep coming up with what they call permanent innovations. You know, they said, you know, we've launched a war to um, increase our subscription rate, and I can only wonder who's the enemy here. Oh yeah, and pornography, very big in Europe, perhaps coming here soon. Hardcore porn available to anyone of any age with a cell phone. Guess what well, that will do to societies? You say, well, I don't want anything to do with this stuff. I don't want anything to do with it. And then they come to your house, the little hydro people, and they go, mm, here's a smart meter next to your little uh, power meter, your water meter. Okay, it won't hurt you. Oh yeah, it emits for over two miles. It transmits high frequency directly into the wiring in your own home. That's great, except this is linked directly to MS, blood sugar spikes, diabetes, asthma, sleep deprivation, headaches, ADD, and numerous other health problems. Why? Because when you put a smart meter on a house and it puts current into your own wiring with current going through it already, you get transients. These spikes again. Remember, it's the spikes, it's the pulsing. And they induce currents in our own bodies. They're worse than the 60 hertz signals in our own electrical wiring that have shown to be detrimental. Especially if your house is not grounded properly and most homes are not. By the way, that's pretty easy to fix uh, by someone who knows what they're doing. We don't need to do this. It's just a money-making deal here because we've got uh, meters are available that download periodically over phone lines or dedicated communication lines. Or the meter reader can buy with a little RIFID meter and just stand in your yard and read the meter. Oh, wait a minute, what about those RIFID chips? Well, everybody's going to have these little RIFID chips. We've got federal workers now and in the U.S. I don't know about Canada. They must carry these biometric ID cards using radio frequencies to communicate with central tracking computers. Prisoners we know have bracelets. They're tracked. The House of Representatives wants to put RIFID chips with well, tags, I don't know if they're going to wear the bracelet or inject it. They didn't say, but 13,500 house members and staff will be riffed. We mentioned the infants in the hospital and their mothers. One problem here, these low frequency fields are classified by the National Institutes of Health and the California Department of Health Services. You see there's signs everywhere in California uh, warning you about things. These fields are classified as probable human carcinogens. Finally, it's not just the technology that's becoming saturated. The frequencies are becoming so, fratu so fractuated, so fractured and saturated. The companies have to keep boosting the frequencies and boosting the power levels because people's signals drop out and they get mad and call up the company. So don't worry. If you, if you really liked Wi-Fi and all the damage it's doing, you're going to love WiMAX. This is Wi-Fi on steroids. Sprint has spent $3 billion on WiMAX technology so that people can connect their music players, video recorders, and portable low-cost PCs to their upgraded 4 gigabyte, 4 billion cycles per second network. 
This is vital if you want to access YouTube and MySpace. I mean, this is important. Uh-oh, problem, problem. They tried this in Sweden a year and a half ago, activated a WiMAX system, and as soon as they powered it up, everybody started running to the hospital. They said, I got blurred vision, I'm dizzy, I feel sick, I feel nauseous. And some people even had heart problems right after they powered this up. They had to turn it off, and hey, everybody's symptoms went away. But don't worry, because full saturation WiMAX networks are now being placed in major cities across the United States. I suppose that, you know, we're always a little bit behind, but I suppose we'll catch up unless we speak out. The result is, and I heard some people talking out in the hallway there about the new radiation sickness. This electro-hypersensitivity, electromagnetic hypersensitivity. We talked about the headaches, dizziness, exhaustion, irritability, irregular heartbeat, high blood pressure, skin rashes, sleep problems, can't get to sleep, can't stay awake during the day, and all the other diseases. We can expect a further three to five fold, 300 to 500 um, percent increase in environmental exposure to microwave frequencies within a few years here in this country. Because each one of us is uniquely susceptible to radiation, there is no known safe level of nuclear or other radiation. The demonstrated effects of wireless radiation on human cells are no different than constant exposure to nuclear radiation. When they went into Chernobyl to uh, check out people's health, they looked at uh, uh, micronuclei, fragments of cells that had been exploded by exposure to the radiation. That same marker is used for cell phone and wireless radiation. Works either way. The cell phone damage, I've got pictures in my book, the damage to the cells is exactly the same. You have a picture of a healthy cell. It's this bright orb, beautiful, and then it's hit with x-rays, uh, nuclear radiation, or cell phone, cell phone tower radiation, all the same, and the cell reacts the same way. It explodes and it gets this comet trail of fragments. That's the micronuclei. The body also releases, um, I mentioned, proteins, stress proteins, in reaction to this heat damage, trying to protect itself. Problem is, it also protects cancer cells. And our watchdogs, at least in the United States, the people that set EMF exposure guidelines, uh, one of the co-chairs is from Motorola, and another is an officer in the US Navy, making sure that uh, all these um, limits are continuously uh, raised so that um, we can keep boosting the power levels. Just like the global warming studies paid for by big oil, cell phone manufacturers are raking in $40 billion a year and they're employing people like uh, Burson Marsteller of the Bhopal whitewash infamy to spread claims attacked by their own researchers as dangerous fallacies. These fake cell phone studies are still being produced by prostitute scientists who accept the big bucks and even bigger karma, I bet, for skewing their results. I recommend the precautionary principle. European governments are turning to this. They insist that all new technologies must be shown to do no harm before being allowed in public. So finally, let's bring it back home. Ever since the very first, muse very first musicians and mystics attempted to replicate the tone of source, check out the didgeridoo, for example, we have come to see that all life is, in fact, a sacred vibration. By remaining in harmony with these vibrations, we retain our physical and our spiritual health. By jamming them with these towers of Babel, we descend into dissonance and physical dissolution. The question posed by our choice is to is whether we will choose convenience or life. As my friend Misha says, think about it and you don't need it. Thank you.